Well, guess what? I don't think I've ever heard about this before, this particular subject, Jacob Scott. Not so Again, I hadn't either. Cool. It was a lot of yeah. learning that I did on this topic, too, to prepare for this segment. Yeah. And it all started with an old adage that snow is a poor man's fertilizer. So I kind of wanted to test the validity of that. And first, starting off with the composition of our atmosphere, the molecules that are all around us invisible. Nitrogen, N2, is 78% and oxygen is 21%, the other is just 1% of our atmosphere. And these compounds play an important role here, but the ones we're gonna focus on are a little bit more complex compounds. Nitrate, again, you have a base of that nitrogen there, but three oxygen atoms attached to it. Ammonium, base of nitrogen as well, but with four hydrogen atoms. And then sulfate, which has uh, sulfur uh, uh, atom with oxygen atoms uh, attached to it. So these compounds are important for fertilizers, for uh, farmers out there, as well as important to measure for trends over time and acid rain and those kinds of things that are important. So with nitrogen specifically, there's a whole cycle throughout our atmosphere and the ground that nitrogen goes through, but plants and crops don't get nitrogen directly from the air. They have to absorb it through their root structure. That's why uh, farmers apply fertilizer and the fertilizer, which is rich in nitrogen, can help these crops to grow. And it happens through a nitrogen fixation process with bacteria usually in the soils. But nitrogen in snow or precipitation, that old adage that I mentioned, is it true? Well, nitrogen is an important fertilizer. There can be some free nitrogen from nature and in the winter season that can be in the form of snow. So snow does contain a little bit of nitrogen and those other particles like sulfur, but so does other types of precipitation and even lightning, but that's really concentrated where it strikes in the surrounding atmosphere. Uh, with rain though, um, that can wash out the atmosphere and all those compounds, the particulates can come down with that rainfall. That's how you get that nitrate and that ammonium to come down to the ground, those bases, uh, compounds that are based on nitrogen. Or those, comp those compounds can act as a nucleus for the precipitation, so the raindrop or the snowflake can form on those particulate matters in the atmosphere. With rain, it usually runs off, though, when it hits the ground. With snow, it blankets the landscape, and that usually melts slowly, allowing for those small amounts of nitrogen in the snow to gradually soak in to the thawed soil in the spring, kind of helping to enrich the soil just a little bit. So nitrogen for, from precipitation is only a few pounds per acre for the whole year. This is where it's kind of just a really small drop in the bucket, whereas nitrogen from fertilizers that are applied to fields is about 100 to 200 pounds per acre per year, depending on the crop. Wheat and corn, usually you see a little bit more nitrogen fertilizer applied to, compared to some other crops. For some crops, it might be less than 30 pounds per acre per year. But having snow on the ground can also insulate that soil and protect it from damage throughout the winter season from those free th freeze thaw cycles. That's why it's important to have that snowpack and why this year it's a little bit concerning not having that snowpack on the landscape. But the snow can have a little bit of these compounds in it. So uh, 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 organization measures these compounds, uh, the deposition of them, how much of them fall down to the ground throughout the year. For ammonium, again NH4, ba nitrogen based compound, we get about two pounds per acre per year across North Dakota. With nitrate, NO3, we get about two and a half pounds per acre per year. And with sulfate, we get about one pound per acre per year. So adding that up, that's only about 5.5 pounds per acre per year. Uh, and these are measured in kilograms per hectares, and I've kind of converted that to our units, pounds per acres here. So the program, the organization that measures this is the Na National Atmospheric Deposition Program. They have 200 measurement sites across the country. There's three in North Dakota. This one is in Woodworth in Stutzman County, one in Theodore Roosevelt National Park, one in the northeastern part of the state. It's a precipitation gauge that measures the amount of rain or snow that falls. And then within this bucket here, it measures the concentration. You can multiply that to determine how much nitrate or sulfate or ammonium falls throughout the year. So the collector opens when some precipitation falls through this sensor and then closes up once the precipitation stops. And then someone actually goes there each week, collects the sample at each of these sites, sends it back to the lab so that weekly data can be updated and aggregated for these yearly assessments. So focusing on sulfate and the trends over time, and you can see the concentration of that, that deposition coming down to the ground, um, it has decreased drastically since the 1980s. 
Now, sulfur is in coal, and when it's burned, that CO2 is released, but also sulfur dioxide. That can convert into sulfuric acid in the atmosphere. And fortunately, the coal industry has found ways to reduce that sulfur and other impurities, and that's why that sulfate has really decreased across uh, the country. And that is also a good thing for lessening the chances of acid rain. That was kind of the whole starting point of the NDAP organization to measure this uh, because the Clean Air Act went into effect and then we really decreased that sulfate in the atmosphere and increased the pH of our rainfall, making it more basic, less acidic, meaning, meaning that it, the rainfall is a lot cleaner, looking for the pH level from 1985 to today, and you can see that that has increased drastically, and that's a good thing. But the sulfate decrease, that's pretty dramatic, has also some impacts on farmers. With the sulfate that's not falling down from the atmosphere, some people have had to apply more sulfur-based fertilizers, which is kind of interesting. Now with ammonium, again, nitrogen-based compound, and measuring that over time, that has increased since the 1980s. And that's due to confined animal feed operations and fertilizers that are picked up by the winds and transported to different locations. Oh, there's other sources as well, but this is concerning for some people in the industry with how can we regulate this now with more ammonium in the atmosphere and therefore more of that coming down to the ground. But that also means a little bit more of that is in nitrogen coming down to the ground as a little bit of free fertilizer since, again, ammonium a nitrogen-based compound and we get that nitrogen that's important, again, for growing crops. Um, so going back to my original question, the nitrogen that falls in snow specifically is a very small percentage of the amount of nitrogen fertilizer that is put down over the year, but it's a little bit there. And it's interesting how these are, uh, compounds are measured and monitored over time to see those trends and how our air and our precipitation is either improving or degrading. And you can really make out to me, Monica, where, uh, like Salt Lake City, in a basin, the, the air pollutants get trapped, mm -hmm. and you can kind of see some of those uh, things on the map. It's kind of an interesting deal. It is very interesting. And yeah. the East Coast, too, higher concentration because more farms, more people. More people. Yeah, yep. right. right. Very good. Makes good stuff. Good sense. Yeah, I learned something new there. Yeah. <laughs>